Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of updates, events, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and also Blender as an app. And this week, we have a couple of updates that you guys would definitely want to take a look at. First off, Blender 2.83.12 has been released and this comes with 10 bug fixes. And you might have also noticed that down here, there was a skipped version of Blender 2.83.11. So for those who would like to get this, maybe you want to get it on Windows, Linux, or you're working with Steam, you can easily get these ones right now. So if you're working with Windows, you can simply go over to the Windows Store where you can get this updated. And for those working with Steam, you can also proceed to get this right there. And for Linux, you can absolutely go over to Snap where you will be able to update this. So Blender 2.83 is one of the most stable versions of Blender that is existing up to now. And this is within the LTS version. So just in case you experience any of the bugs within the time you're working with Blender 2.83, you can simply go over to change log and see if the bugs which you've been experiencing has been fixed. Now, with this said, we're definitely going to take a look at some other updates that is coming. So the folks at Blender Foundation have also implemented a brand new depth of field. So there's a brand new implementation for the depth of field. And this is for you to be able to get a much more richer and a better looking depth of field while you're working in Blender. Now, right here, you would also notice that there is a complete refactoring of the old system. And the goal for this is to increase the quality first and then have something more flexible and more optimized for people to use. So if you take a look at some of the images here, so let's simply wait for this image to render. All right. So if you take a look at the images here, you would notice that they look visually appealing compared to what they would have looked like before. Meanwhile, for a very good comparison, there is actually an effect of overblow left and right comparison that is right here so you can also you know come through and take a look at this so i'm just going to go ahead and open this and you can see what it looks like without and you can see what it looks like with i mean by just simply going back and forth you can tell that there's a huge improvement with the depth of field and the depth of field is not the only thing that's having a new improvement or you know a beautiful implementation cycles is also having something so this is for ev and this right here is for cycles so if you've ever wanted to see a much more better or a nicer looking implementation of subsurface there is now an implementation for the dweller guiding for path traced subsurface scattering so this is to get you a nicer looking you know self-surfacing when you're working with blender so i'm also going to link this in the description so that you guys can take a look at it so you can take a look at some of the updates right here and you can see these renders that can help you get things in perspective so these are some very cool and uh, beautiful stuff going on so i'm just going to link this one in the description so you guys can do well to check this one out and while we're talking about things that you can check out, the Google Summer of Code is about to begin. So the folks at Blender Foundation are asking for ideas. So just in case you have ideas or you want to join in this year's Google Summer of Code, you can simply also go over to the Google Summer of Code section and get started with it. Meanwhile, there are certain things that you need to read up for you to actually get into this as there's a definition for what a project is like and there are certain idea lists going on here. So there are some things that you might want to take a look at see how these things can help you how they can guide you to making proper decisions for what the ideas that you're going to be creating and also ideas that you will be bringing to the folks at blender foundation so lovely stuff going on here but then there's also something that the folks at blender foundation are still looking for ideas for and this is not just the google sum of code they are also calling for content now the content which they are calling for is for content that will be used for the brand new release of blender 2.92 which seems to be coming very soon. So hopefully within this month or something, we should be seeing that. So just in case, and actually let's go ahead and check that out. So I think it's uh, somewhere within the month. So let's actually go ahead and check it out. And yeah, right here. So within the month, it, this is uh, supposed to be released. And right now they're calling for content. So just in case you have content, you can actually go ahead and send this to them as the pre-release is going to be on the 17th, which is sometime in a couple of weeks. And then the final release is going to be on the 24th. So these are some lovely stuff going on here. So if you have content and you would like to submit this for the upcoming Blender 2.92 release, you can simply go ahead and contact Martin7 right here within the Blender chat. And you know, you can go ahead and, and speak with him. I'm going to put a link to this one in the description. So just in case you want to get some better understanding of what they want, or maybe you're trying to uh, send some contents to them, you would be able to read these things up for yourself. 
So with this said, sometime within the week, we talked about key mesh and key mesh is a tool that a lot of you guys have been excited about over some days. And it's very nice to see that we finally have this thing. So Pablo De Barrow and also Daniel Martinez have actually gone ahead to release this. And we also talked about some of the cool features and stuff that you can do with it. But then there have been a couple of questions about how to work with key mesh. So with this said, we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this one works. So once you download this add-on, all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference and do your installation. Now, how does key mesh work? So we already talked about how this one works, but you know, I've gotten a couple of questions about what's the huge difference between key mesh and shape keys. And we're just gonna talk about it. Key mesh is mostly for making things that looks like, you know, frame by frame animation, which is more like stop animations. And this is going to be nice for those who like to do these things in 3D. Now, for you to get started, all you need to do is press N on the keyboard, go over to key mesh right here, and you can start moving stuff. So let's say at this point, you would like to add a keyframe mesh. So you can click on this button to add that. And this right here, stays there so whatever thing that you do here so even if we come right here and we do a bevel right over here this is stored on this point so we can now move over to a separate point like this and from here i could actually move this object right to this point and let's add a key right there and right over here we can select that select maybe let's switch over to faces select one or two and we can insert these faces and also let's do a simple extrusion let's do that extrusion and set that to individual and do that extrusion one more time and yes so we can do that extrusion like so now that we're done with this if we press the tab key we now notice that we have this here so because it's a frame by frame thing what happens is if we move from one frame to another you get to see this thing happening now this is more like uh, storing this image or you know this mesh so it's storing this mesh in a given keyframe so at this frame we have this one and at this frame we have this other one so this is how it works this is different from what you get once you're doing your shape keys for your shape keys you probably would not be able to distort the mesh which is one thing so for your shape keys you need to make sure that you have exactly the same polygon count contrary to this one where you can actually go in there and you can break the polygon count however you want so at this point you can have this polygon count like so and we can also go over to maybe like frame 20 and click on you know key mesh or keyframe mesh and once we have that we can also choose to throw in a subdivision right there so once we have that subdivision we can now simply select this go right over here and hit the apply button so once we have that applied we can go here and we have this and on this frame right here we have that on that frame so we can have this so contrary to the default shape keys you cannot break the polygon count so in most cases you can break the polygon count and this simply stores these meshes as individual vertices all right so we can go over here go over to this section and you notice that we have the first one and then we also have the second one and then we have the third one so this is basically how it works if you want to get more understanding about how this thing really works there's going to be a link in the description that'll take you over to the video where we talked about the announcement the release of key mesh and everything which you need to know about it so with this said let's also dive over to blender 2.93 and take a look at something so the folks at blender foundation have also implemented a couple of things and um, one of them is this so i will actually do a separate video about this one so i just want to show you guys that that once you type point you will now notice that there is a very simple point to volume tool that exists right here so with this now you can now play with the density you can add points to an object and you can now play with the density play with the radius and do some very lovely things with this so depending on what you want so depending on what you're going for you can now convert points to volumes by simply using the geometry node at this point so we're going to do a separate video about this one and explain in details how this works and also how this works in relation with a couple of other things so there's also an is viewport node that has been added so we've already talked about collections we've talked about the attribute sample texture but we'll talk about this too very very soon so simply keep your eye open in the notification to get updated with that let's take a look at something else so the folks at blender foundation right now they're looking for someone for the role 
of rendering software engineer. So if you're a rendering engineer or you have a skill set like that, you may want to apply for this role. And there are certain things that you need to consider that you should be able to handle that would get you up to speed. Now, one of the things which I love that they've actually done here is that you can be able to work remotely or if you live somewhere in Amsterdam, you can work in Amsterdam. So it doesn't really matter whether you're present or not. You can simply apply and send your CV and motivation email to production at blender.org. So lovely stuff coming from the folks at Blender Foundation. And while we speak about lovely stuff, let's look at the chumification. So chumification is more like a, a tag name which has been given by the creators of the Sprite Fright. And it has to do with the motives and you know the way they get to consider the creation of their characters and the design language that was brought into the Sprite Fright. So if you want to read more about this, you want to see all of the things they get to consider and see how they went from this previous image to the present image and also the certain things that they get to consider for changing the images and changing the scaling, changing how the outlook of the props get to look like, you might want to come through, read this for yourself and get good with them. And this is not just going to be educational for you, but it's also going to be very informative. And this can help you rethink how your next model would look like, especially when it has to do with the design language for your next project. And while we're looking at things that will be very beneficial for you, we are also seeing that the folks at Blender Foundation have also aided the folks at Krita to get a very nice deformation tool. So just in case you're working with Krita, there's a very beautiful deformation tool right now that is existing. I love the deformation tool. I love what they've done with it. I love that they've also, you know, extended a helping hand to the folks at Krita to get this thing working. And I would really love to see that same feature come over to Blender's graph. So I would like to see this come over to Blender graph editor and probably see this in other tools that exist with Blender. And with all this said, let's take a look at one very free add-on that I think most of you guys would like. And this is the add-on from Kami. Kami has just released a free add-on which would help you create manga and anime style hairs directly in Blender. This is going to help you create things easy and you will definitely find a lot of use cases for this. So just in case you're into sculpting or maybe you're into modeling or you're into creating mesh hairs, you will definitely find this one with ease. So there's going to be a video in the description that can also help you get started with it. And just in case you want to get this to link to that is also going to be in the description. So tons of cool stuff today that we've taken a look at. A huge shout out to the folks at Blender Foundation for releasing the 2.83.12 version. And of course, if you like to get these things, you can also go over to all of the links in the description and take a look at them. And for those who are looking for cool add-ons, you're also looking for cool stuff that you can download and also equip your Blender toolset. Link to that is also going to be in the description. So do well to check these things out. And tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, Free Friday, Tutorial Tuesday, Tips and Tricks, things like this. Peace.